I want to talk about a topic that's crucially important to me. But first we need to watch something. Watch this. There is a 0.1 statistic probability that that will go down, but there's also a possibility that it will go up. Statistically, that could have flown to the ceiling. But you and I know pretty well that's going to go hit the ground because of the law of gravity. That's called a 0.1 statistical probability in a positive correlation. So you're pretty sure in statistics we get 0.1 that something's going to happen. The next fact is 100 times greater. It's not 0.1 or 0.01, but 0.001 probability. And that's this. The greater the child abuse, the greater the number of addictions. So the more you're hurt as a child, the greater number of addictions. It's 100 times greater that that relational, intrapersonal, interpersonal relationship law is true, then the, the sun comes up. That's how, that's how true this is. What happens with children is when you get sexually abused or physically abused, a number of things get damaged. Your need for safety goes away. Your need for love and belonging because you're abused by your parents or the friends of a family member. That's 30% of them. Or it could be, a, uh, it could be a, another family member, it could be your parents. But that sense of love and belonging could be a team member, could be a teacher, could be a babysitter, somebody. But you know, that sense of love and belonging that you have, that sense of trust, goes away. So your psychological need for love and belonging that makes you a sane person goes away. The third thing that goes away is that the need for esteem for others. You need people to be psychologically healthy. You have to have people say, you're important to me. You value, you're valuable to me. I care about you. You're important in my life. Seeing you every day matters to me. You brighten up my day. That need for esteem. When someone is abusive to you, you're not esteemed. That esteem from others goes away. So that need for esteem from others goes away. As though that weren't enough, and don't you think it ought to be, self-esteem, when you're abused by somebody, your self-esteem, your value of yourself, I am worthless, I, am, I, I deserve this, this should happen to me, I, the, I should have stopped this, they're doing it because of me. That, you lo that lowers your self-esteem. So the need for self-esteem, the need for esteem from others, the need for safety, and the need for love and belonging go away. And what happens to people when those needs are not met? And every human being from Jesus on down has those needs. And if those needs are not met, there are things that you do. You drink alcohol, you take drugs, you smoke cigarettes, you drink coffee, you masturbate, you cheat on women, intrigue, objectification, fantasy, debt, overwork, gambling, being codependent, lots of things. And I've used all of those things, every one of those things, because the greater the child abuse, the greater the number of addictions. The difficulty with this is, is denial is an incredibly powerful thing. It's powerful in sex addiction and alcoholism, drug addiction. It's especially difficult in food addiction. And so what's hard is for people in recovery who get into one recovery, say you're an AA, but you're a food addict. The denial is unbelievable. Or let's say that you're a codependent, but you don't want to look at your sex addiction. Or let's say that you're a gambler and you don't want to look at your overworking. But all those things are potentialities and it requires humility. Humility is defined as teachability. It doesn't mean, oh, whining and muley and puking. That's not what it means. It means, teach me what you're saying so that I understand. And with that humility, I can look at these other addictions because the child abuse causes a multiplicity of addictions. 